I think it was in 1929, correct me if I'm wrong, Nikola Tesla invented this and he called it his thermomagnetic generator. Now it's a reciprocating engine, it's pretty simple stuff actually, it's kind of cool. Um, you put a heat source in here and that will fly backwards and forwards. So I'm going to do a close-up of that. So here is Tesla's thermomagnetic generator. All it is is a perspex thing with uh, brass rod in it, a bit of copper wire, a bit of nickel wire wound around there and then a magnet. Now obviously nickel is magnetic and with the moment that magnet is attracting the nickel. If I heat that nickel, it takes a little while to get going just to get enough temperature, it'll lose its magnetism and fall away. Then it'll cool and regain its magnetism and that's what's cool about these things. There it goes. Now that is super cool and mildly hypnotic, so you could watch that for a while, but um, it's quite a small thing and it doesn't do that much, really. It just waggles that arm backwards and forwards because the um, nickel is gaining and losing its magnetism, which we all know is the Curie point. But when I was looking at this, what I came up with was this. It's a rotary version. Actually, one of the things I quite like about this is this bearing. It's a needle stuck through a nickel disc. The needle's in contact with those magnets there, which magnetizes the needle. And these magnets here actually are attracting the point of the needle, but not as strongly as this. So it gives a really low friction bearing. At the back there, obviously, what we've got is another magnet. And there we go, we get a rotating disc. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, th those are really cool science toys, but they're just toys, eh? Um, actually, I just want to show you this bearing again a bit more closely, because it, as I think it's worth uh, having a look at. Okay. So that needle there is held by nothing. So we can pick the needle out and it's just that magnet stack there attracts the point of the needle. And then if you see the needle point isn't touching that magnet stack because it's slightly weaker than this magnet stack, but it is lining up that bearing. It's quite a weak bearing in terms of it can't carry much weight in that direction, but it is a very low friction bearing. And, and um, actually I like it, it's one of my favorite bearings. Anyway, I thought I'd take the time and show you that. So I wondered if we could do anything more powerful with it. So what I've got here actually is a, a pulley wheel and I've wrapped a load of this stuff around it. It's nichrome wire. Nichrome wire is about 80% nickel and 20% chromium, something like that. It's used for heating elements. Obviously uh, I've got this because of my kiln, but if you remember when we pulled apart a um, toaster, a toaster is absolutely full of nichrome wire. So if you feel like doing something like this, then it's easy for you to be able to do it because you've got a huge resource of nichrome wire kicking around that you can use to make these things. So if you've got any magnets in a toaster you don't like, well, you can make thermomagnetic generators all day long, which I thought was really cool. Anyway, I've wrapped some nichrome wire around this pulley and I've stuck a magnet right here. The pulley is aluminium. So it can take a bit of brute force. And instead of having a candle, I've got a blowtorch. Hmm. 
So that will work uh, even on the large scale. Now there's a big mass of material here, so if you saw it zipped around and then um, stopped, heated up, zipped around, stopped, heated up. So my guess is if this mass gets to that balance point between the heating and the cooling, we should be able to get that to spin relatively quickly. Hmm. So there you go. I thought it was a lot of fun. I seem to be burning the bearings, which I guess is no surprise. I've been pounding it with the blowtorch. But uh, easy to make from bits you've got lying around. If you need nichrome wire, have a look in a toaster. Another good place, actually, is a hairdryer. It's got loads of it in there. Uh, if you've got some magnets, say from an old speaker or something, then you could make thermomagnetic generators all day long. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.